Here's how you can create dynamic backgrounds from scratch in Photoshop. Everything we create in this video is gonna be rendered entirely in Photoshop. We're not bringing in outside photos other than, than my featured cutout here, just so we have something to put on the background. So let's start with this wavy gradient background. To do this, I'm gonna make a new layer and let's just fill it with a solid color for now. And then with a, another new layer, let's start making just dots of different colors. And your colors can be anything you want. I'm gonna choose some warmer tones. So maybe this orange, we can do a yellow. And I'm just putting these dots in sort of random places by making them pretty big. And we can do this red color as well. Maybe we make this one bigger and can replicate this in the corner. Let's merge these color layers into one layer just by holding shift, clicking on both those layers and then command E on a Mac. You can also right click merge layers. Now with this new layer selected, let's convert it for smart filters and then go up to filter liquify. And now with this pressure brush selected, which should be your default setting in liquify, we're just gonna start clicking and dragging and moving this gradient around. And you can see it's creating this like interesting wave pattern where it's, it's skinny and narrow in some parts and wider in others, something like this. Looks good, we'll hit okay. And because we converted it for smart filters, you can always go back in and change this later just by double clicking on liquify and continuing to mess with it. And then if you ever wanna change the colors, you can just go drop a gradient map on top of the whole thing by going down to your adjustments, gradient map, and now you can choose from any of these presets. You've got grays, sort of boring, greens are festive. We'll go into the reds for this example just because our cutout is wearing red. Maybe this pink and purple one's kind of cool. Let's look at some textures you can create next. So starting with this topographic map, we're gonna make uh, another swirly pattern with lines basically. So if you make a new layer and we're gonna convert this for smart filters just to blank, layer right off the bat. We're gonna go up to filter and then we're gonna render some clouds. It's gonna create these clouds. And now if you go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, however you wanna pronounce it, we're gonna crank this radius up to, yeah, like at least 100 pixels. This document is a 1080 by 1350. So you might have to adjust. The key is we don't wanna really see many of the clouds and I'll show you why. Finally, we'll go up to filter, stylize and find edges. This is gonna find the edges of that blurred layer. And if we zoom in, you can see, maybe you can't see well on this video, but there are like very faint swirly lines giving us this topographic map effect. Now to see these lines better, let's bring in a curves layer, going down to your adjustments, curves, and let's just start playing with this dial until we can see our lines and just dragging these points around. That looks pretty good. If we wanted to darken them further, can just duplicate this curves layer. Obviously now it is very dark so we can bring down that opacity. Basically we can group this all in a folder. You've got the, the layer of the, the wave pattern and then your two curves layers grouped in a folder and then we'll set this blend mode to multiply and we'll reduce the opacity. So it just kind of blends in with the background. We can even drop this below the gradient map. So that's also being affected and it really blends in with the colors we have going on in the background. And then you can also play with this specific topographic map as you see fit, because you can just go in, if you double click clouds, it's gonna randomize clouds again, like re-render them. So it'll change the pattern up a little bit. And then you can also go into your Gaussian blur crank it up to you know 150 pixels and you'll see the lines get a little bit further apart. The next texture we can do is create a grid pattern. Again, you don't need any outside photos or textures online. We can create a grid directly within Photoshop because they give us a grid to work with. If you make a new layer, fill it with just black and then command apostrophe is how you toggle your grids. I have a full video on grids, guides, and margins. Definitely check that out if you haven't yet. But these are the grids built into Photoshop. You can toggle them on and off. We're just gonna take a screenshot of this and then drag it directly back into our document. Take my screenshot, pops up over here on a Mac and I'll just bring it in, size it right back up. Now I'm toggling off my grids. We don't have them anymore, and this is now just like an image of a black box with grids on it. And so right now we can just set this blend mode to screen, and you can see the grid is showing through. But if we wanted to change the color and really manipulate it further, what we can do, let's go back to normal blend mode. You can go up to image adjustments. Let's set it to black and white first. 
but I want this gray to be fully white. So let's crank the blues all the way up to really create that contrast. And now on a new layer, I'm just gonna fill this layer with yellow, for example. So filled with yellow. I'm going to now with this grid screenshot, I'm gonna hit Command A to select the whole screen, Command C to copy, and then we're gonna put that on a mask of this yellow layer. So if you click the mask icon on your filled layer and then option click on this mask, that's gonna bring up the mask as we're looking at it. So now if we hit Command V to paste the grids in here, we now have this as the mask of the yellow layer, which means everything in white is showing through, so it's gonna reveal this yellow. And now we can change the color more freely, like this, this light blue, darker blue, magenta. So let's again drag this below our gradient map. And I don't love the contrast we're getting between the, the rigid grid and then the swirly topographic map, so I'm just gonna deactivate this for now. The next thing we can do is just use shapes in your background to kind of separate out different elements. This is a great way if you're creating a graphic that has like a player cutout on one side, type on the other, and you're looking for a way to kind of naturally segment out the different elements, just starting to create shapes. It kind of creates a constraint for yourself where you want to put things in certain areas. So let's do something like that. I'm gonna make a new layer and let's take this purple color. I'm just gonna eyedropper it. If you hit B for your brush tool and then hold option, that'll bring up your eyedropper icon. So that's kind of the shortcut I use. And then we'll go to our shapes and I've got the, the rectangle tool selected. Let's just draw out rectangle right in the middle. And I'm gonna distort this by hitting Command T to transform, and then holding Command, you can click and drag from this top point and we can really skew it. And I kinda wanna make it in the like the same direction as his body, something like that. And now I'm just gonna place this, this parallelogram shape. We can blow it up, again, just transforming it. And maybe we wanna blend it into the background a bit more so I can switch the blend mode to multiply, fade it out maybe. I mean, we can make this whatever we want. And then I would say if you're ever creating multiple shapes in the background, just try to be consistent with your angles. So like I would duplicate this shape and then drag it down. Maybe we have something in the corner. You could put like a logo or some text down there. And maybe if we want even a third shape, we could shrink this one down a good amount. Maybe we put it up here, but make it feel like they all kind of belong in the same area. Another way you can draw out shapes is just with the pen tool. So if we deactivate all of these, make a new layer, hit P for your pen tool over here. And then we can just click and click and drag. We're just gonna give him a floor to stand on. So this is another good way you can really separate out the cutout from the background, make it feel like he's standing on something and not just kind of floating in space. We could even put the grid texture on this shape to, to really make it feel like it is a different thing altogether. So yeah, maybe we have the grid down here. You can even tweak the grid just by distorting it, make it feel more like a floor based on the angle. The last thing we'll look at is just taking advantage of the filters that are already in Photoshop. So let's deactivate the floor he's standing on and deactivate the cutout, but just taking this screen as we're looking at it. So let's make a new layer and then the shortcut Command Option Shift E. That's gonna basically stamp the canvas onto its own layer. Now we'll go up to Filter, Convert for Smart Filters, and then really it's up to you within this filter menu, I would encourage you to try out different things. If you go into distort and wave, again, if we're, if we're really leaning into this wavy theme, you can play with different wave patterns here. You can also go into camera raw filter. There's some distortion you can do within this. If you go to optics, distortion, you know, you can bring it all in, pinch it in or blow it up. You can also just do textural things too, like adding grain to the whole design. I'll also mention blur as a good filter to take advantage of. So if you go to blur, either motion blur or Gaussian blur, one of those, maybe radial blur even. It is like a really effective way to separate out your subject from the background. So if we have that blur on, you can see like before and after the blur, it really does a good job of changing the whole feel of the background. And you can experiment with the different blur effects. I really like radial blur, for example. So if you go to radial blur, zoom, 
Maybe we'll set it to seven, I guess. And this is just gonna blur the edges of the background more so than the middle. So lots of fun stuff to play with within the filter menu, specifically blur and distort. I would lean into those subcategories for sure. And now for a last bonus tip, I'm gonna show you how to add a border real quick at the end of your design so we can Make a new layer, let's just fill it with black. Let's go into our effects down here and hit it with a stroke. And this is gonna ensure that our border is like perfectly even on all sides. So we'll hit 50 pixels. If you decrease this fill to zero, we're left with just the stroke showing through to whatever is on our background. And if we wanna fill in this border with really whatever we want, I would right click this layer and then rasterize layer style. We can group this layer into its own folder. We can rename it border. So grouping it into its folder and then let's make a mask on the folder of this border. So command click on this little thumbnail image of the border and then that selects it and you can now mask it on this folder. And now whatever you put in this folder is gonna create this border to the design. And this could be a solid color. Maybe you wanna keep it as white. You could also just take this same image. So let's hold option and click and drag this background image that we already have. And I'm just gonna blow it up, Command T to transform. We can do some other things to distance it more, but, but you can see like it's already creating kind of this interesting effect around the edge. Maybe we take a gradient map to it and change the color. You get the idea, just playing around with these. I mean, you can also fill these with different images. Like this video, obviously we haven't been pulling in outside photos, but that's not to say you're not allowed to. You can definitely do that in your own design. So that's all I have for you today. Hopefully this video was helpful and let me know if you have any questions.